Maybe not the best apprentice I've ever owned, but certainly the smartest. <laughs> For safety. Go ahead and start the clock. Down in the doobly doo fella's been telling me that my boxing game is weak. It can't all be Mike Tyson in his prime. Although he got quite a payoff there. I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't have bet against him, but it's a Fugazi. <laughs> Oh, yeah, boxing game. Mm, mm hmm, mm hmm, mm. Mm, dusty. <coughs> Nicely packed. Battery installated. No es bueno. See if they're dead. Sitting on a warehouse shelf somewhere. Look at that. Real live Japanese. It's that anti rust paper probably around the periphery of the chuck. 40 volt. Whoa. A Louis Vuitton handbag. With dirty go. Theft deterrent teal. Although it's got a nice off gray beige. Oh. Might actually keep this one. Uh... <coughs> Time! Let's just see. Oh no. Oh no, dead did. Oh no. Oh no. The fuck over. Out. Ah. Oliva, was gibt es dann war? Das blinken blue lights nicht für der finger poking und der spitzen sparksen. I'm interested in the battery, so we'll have a look at that. And I've turned over a new leaf, inviting our foreign friends, Manuel, to the party. If not for anything but invoking the spirit of Charlie Munger and inverting everything they say. <laughs> Do not disassemble or tamper with the battery cartridge. It may result in a fire. Excessive heat. Does that not Department of Redundancy Department? Something like that. I gotta drill out the anti-tamper tab. It appears. Oh yeah, also. I have heard that cork stuff and makes you deaf. But apparently it also makes you blind. <laughs> Whoopsie doodle. There is a tab in there. Keen-eyed shop denizens alerted me. You're doing it wrong! <laughs> Fingies! Anybody following along at home? We got the Torx 10. The battery case itself is indicated with a polycarbonate, which is an expensive, rigid, tough plastic. That's what they make the Z95 glasses out of. Oh, Z87! Oh, God, I'll never live it down. Yes, this is a black glove operation. Nice. If that don't tickle your taint, partner, you're using the wrong grit. Those wily Japanese bastards, what a beautiful layout. Gorgeous battery construction. All kinds of celastic all around the periphery holding in the components. The surface mount layout. Look at the look at the layout of that board. All kind of passives. We've got a big brain box microcontroller here. We've got a balancing, some sort of maintenance battery, specially spun up for battery controller. Big old MOSFET. Whole bunch of surface mount pads. What have been schmooed for to keep the heat down. All of the leads. 
capped on tape. See that? That's high temperature poly, polyamid tape. It doesn't melt. It'll burn, but it won't melt. Oh, dielectric grease. So lovingly and gingerly applied. You just feel the job satisfaction. Cells made in Singapore, further processed in, in China. Well, well, whoever's watching those factories, hats off to you, Pard, is the paragon of battery controllers. Just by the look of her, well, I still don't see why you went with 40 volts, other than detecting my wallet over thickness fault. I don't recall seeing battery retention fasteners on the inside of the battery. I clamp the cells down into the casement. If I did, it would have been in a Hilti, which I haven't taken a part in a while. Apparently they changed the batteries too. I got a Torx 8 here. It doesn't seem to be too happy. Those are in there good. A little too good. It must have some adhesive on there. I might need to get some extractors out for these. Stripped. These are them screw extractors, double enders. You get into kits, used to be 30 bucks, 40 bucks a kit. Now you just get them on the regular scumbags for. Hmm. 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 Not small enough. So if we just got a regular left hand twist drill. Extractor. And these are the bits you hand to the apprentice. He'll never notice that they're left hand twist. <laughs> and then you ask him what the hell's taking so long. <laughs> now something just curled over in there. We loosened it up. You mucking slusher. <clears throat> Ended up drilling the head off it. Surprisingly, the battery is already charged. I didn't realize I was struggling with this thing for so long, but oh, it's hot. She's a toasty. <gasps> Hallelujah! 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 <coughs> Fish tape. A fish paper, like you'd see in a transformer, high dielectric strength adhesive sticker up against the traces. Let me get that off. I do see fatal flaw. Holes in the bottom of the battery. Which means if you set this down in a puddle or the least amount of water in a bathtub or uh, you're going to have water in the battery right away. Carefuling. Carefuling. It says right in the manual, if you get electrolyte in your eye, be sure and wash it thoroughly. Something tells me you're working on a high energy lithium battery. If you get a sudden discharge of electrolyte, the least of your worries is getting it in your eye. But I'm not an expert. You might want to defer to your wife. It's got those real thin current carriers like the Bosch had. I wasn't too impressed with. But these aren't flipping and flopping around in the breeze. And they are some sort of electroplated copper. Maybe nickel plated, welded to the cell itself. You can see the copper coming through that nickel electroplating. Now we've got one, two, three, four, five doubled up. So are these all in series for 40 volts? You would need, these are four, 
4.2 volts per cell. So all of these would need to be seriesed up, positive to negative. Longevity wise, with the super fast charge, it's convenient, but it's hard on the cells. It leads to the formation of dendrites, metallic dendrites. Reapply the decal. There is no way to get at the cells other than cutting open the prefamulated amulite, thereby likely destroying the cell. Somebody's already done our work for us. Workshop tools and tricks, tools and some Australian cunt. These are Murata VTC 5AS polycarbonate. Again, no expense spared. Got the battery back together. We're going to see. Takes it how long? We'll have a look at the D rail. XGT, I had to look this up, it means next generation technology. So we're going to see. If indeed this is next generation technology, the battery had some good affixations and some good features. Again, I don't like not being able to just plunk it in a half a thimble full of water. It happens. Just incredible the power density on these tools. Now, look at the size of the motor. That's but 30 millimeters long. Shielded bearing on the back, which is interesting. Not a seal, but just a, a shield. Keep the big chunks out. Powder metallurgy gear on the front side. You can pull that rotor out. Other than that, bog standard. Tiny little bearings in there. Incredible. Not much to it. Have the Hall Effect board there going into the brain box. Brain box is fully encapsulated. You can see all the passives on the surface mount board. And you can also see the brain box. Electrolytic cap in there. We have an Omron trigger switch, the bellows. Feels quite robust. There is no ka chunk, ka -chunk switch. Or the power contacts. No butt connectors. Too tight in there for butt connectors. Somebody had mentioned to me, no, 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 the reason that Makita put butt connectors on listen is so that you can change out the motor. So you're gonna cut the wires to change out the motors and you have to if you're going to replace a motor and putting butt connector, you don't need the butt connectors in the first place. Also, these guys, you really think they want to sell you spare parts? I just picked this up. This uh, brand name, Rome, R O Umbraut H M, Chairman brand, Chuck, and it is crusty, crusty. Both directions. Why? Why? When you loosen it off or tighten it up, you want it to be spinny. So the poles, the ratchet poles are sticky icky. We got the planetary gear set, the nylon on the low torque end, and then the higher working end with the hammer mechanism. It's all die cast aluminum. I think I was going to disqualify this on account of the shitty chuck, but I think this, this got used. This may be a return. Somebody needed to do a big drilling job over the weekend, bought it on a Friday and returned it on a Monday. That's blinking light. It went blue. Solid blue means it's up at 80% already. Up at 80% charged. It's just topping it up. That's quick. I wonder if there's a setting where you can just go slower charge, just, just to be kind. I was gonna say it's probably not Makita's fault that somebody returned this and 
I got sloppy seconds. Mind you, I rather like butter on my buns. <laughs> but these balls, man, you can't have soft balls. I'm sitting here stinking about this. Yeah, yeah, no. See, there's no lube on the periphery. That's an assembly problem. There's no lube on the mating ramps and that outer ring for making that, the hammer mechanism. So even though this was maybe a return special and I got the shit end of the stick on that one, there should be some lube on there. And these pins, they look like balls, but they're long pins to actuate. They've already got flat spots on them. You see the flat spots there? Different size flat spots and then all chewed up. That ain't good, man. Couple that with the fact that whoever designed this has never actually used a tool in his life. You don't put the in the bottom of the battery. That's where the water goes in. Come on, man. Come on. So disappointment. Much fuckery. Save your money. So thanks for watching, boys. Keep your dick out of this vice. Well, this is great. I just turned my back and there she is, right fucking full. Angry pixies. I'd say if I had to guess 30 minutes. Now, here's the thing about that. There's a trade-off. The faster you charge it, the harder it is on the battery. Got her back together. I recant. There's no way this was used, especially not for hammer drilling. Look at it. It's too minty. Those gears were factory encrapulated. Let's give her a tentative little poke here on some aluminum. Drill mode. Fucking thing doesn't drill for shit. 